What's up everyone? Today we're doing a really interesting problem where we're going to try and determine whether or not a binary tree is balanced or not. And honestly, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that without us just jumping right into the problem because we want to, the first thing we want to do in this problem is ask our interviewer to explain exactly what they mean by a balanced binary tree. And the reason for this is that after doing a bunch of research online, I found two quite conflicting definitions of what that means. So the first definition is maybe the more straightforward definition or obvious definition, which is that out of all the branches in the tree, there are no branches that are more than one different in length. So like a good example of that would be this tree here. So you have all of the branches are length three, except for this, well, this is length three, there's no child here. So all of the branches are length three. And if, for example, you were to add this node here, where you had a, so this branch is length four and the other branches are all length three, that would still be a balanced tree. But there's another definition of what a balanced tree is, and that's a little bit more complicated, but also seemingly a more popular way to treat it. And in this example, this is a binary tree. And what we're doing, or this is a balanced tree, sorry. And what we're looking at here is whether any two subtrees are more, than, more or less than one different in maximum height. And so what you can see here is that, for example, the two subtrees, we have the right subtree and the left subtree. So this subtree is of height four and this subtree is of height five. So that is acceptable. And then we have this subtree here, which is, so the left subtree is, is height two and the right subtree is height one, and on this tree, each subtree is height one, and on this subtree, we have height three on the left side and height two on the right side. So you can see that all of the subtrees are balanced, but the distance or the difference between the shortest and tallest node on the tree is significant, or the like longest and shortest branch on the tree. There's a significant difference. So we need to understand what it is that our interview is actually asking us to do here because it, as you can see it'll lead to a significantly different solution to the problem so for example if we take if we go back to the first definition where our balanced tree has to have all of the branches are within one have a height within one of each other then that is actually a fairly simple problem to solve because what we can do is we can just go calculate the tallest branch and the shortest branch of the tree and compare them and we could just do this recursively we could just do a depth first search to find the longest branch and the shortest branch and it'll take linear time because it'll go through all the nodes well all the nodes twice but that's still linear time or you could maybe optimize that somehow by doing a breadth first search or something like that but you could do that fairly easily but if your interview if that's not what your interviewer is looking for then you just wasted a bunch of time solving this problem that wasn't the problem they were asking so what i'm going to do in this case is i am going to treat this second case where this is a balanced tree where we're balancing the subtrees because I think that's a more interesting problem more than anything else. That's really the main reason why I want to do that instead. Uh, and we already sort of talked about how you would solve this. So that's basically what we would, we want to confirm with our interviewer what exactly what we're doing before we get started. So let's think about how we actually are going to solve this. And immediately when I see a tree, I think recursion because it's going to be the easiest way to traverse the tree. And I know that what I can do is just recursively call on each subtree. Is it the, is it balanced or not? Because that's what I'm really looking at is, is every subtree balanced? And so if I call that recursively on any of these terminal, on any of these leaves, 
I'm going to get that both the children are null, so they both have a height of zero, and therefore it's balanced. And then I'm gonna call when I call it here, you know, or when I call it here, I get that this subtree is of height one, and this non-existent subtree on the right is of height zero, and they're no more than one different. And then when I return up here, I can get the height of I can combine these two into a single function, right? Because I am doing the recursion down, so I'm also can be computing the height at the same time. And so when I get to here, I just get, I call my function on this and this subtree, and then what I can, I can actually combine these into one so that I'm both validating that the subtree is balanced and also getting the height of the subtree. And we'll see how to do that by basically I'm going to return a height of negative one if the subtree is not balanced and I'm gonna return a height of zero or greater if the subtree is balanced. And we know that there can never be a negative height. So this is going to be a good way that we can do this. So let's, hopefully that sort of makes sense and you'll see more as we get into the code, but let's just jump in to the actual code. So I'm gonna go ahead and define a private node class because that's going to represent our tree. So it's just gonna, and you know, this is gonna be a tree of integers, but it doesn't really matter. Like the actual values, and we're not even looking at the values in the tree. So in theory, you could just have empty nodes that don't have any value in them, but I'm gonna put that in there because I think that doesn't really make sense to have a tree of nodes with no values in it. So, and then we're doing, it's a binary tree, so we only have two children. So I'm gonna do node left and node right. Like that to represent the two children. And now we're gonna, our main function is going to be return a Boolean, right? Because we're returning just, is it balanced or is it not? And I'm just gonna call that is balanced. And it's going to take in a node n. So, then I also am going to I'm going to define a private method to actually do my recursion in. So unfortunately, in this case, I can't actually overload the function because what I would usually do would be have an is balanced and then add additional parameters or whatever I needed. But in this case, the thing that I'm actually changing is the return type. So I have to come up with a different name. So I'm going to call, because this is going to return an int, right? Because we talked about it's going to return the height of the subtree. So we're going to, I'm just going to call this balanced height. But you can call it whatever you want. And now let's fill these in. So first of all, if the node is null, then we know that we're, we, or if we know, if the node is null, then we know that we're below one of these. So we're in sort of like this position here where our node is below the leaf. So the height at that point is going to be zero. So we're going to, if the node is null, we'll just return zero. So if n equals null, return zero. And this is our base case, right? As I'm a big fan of sort of defining your base case first when you do recursion, because then you know that your recursion is always going to terminate. And then we are now going to get the height of the, t if it's not null, we want to get the height of the two children. So int, I'll just say h1 equals balanced height of n dot left and h2 is going to be height of n dot right just like that and now what i want to do is so if either of them is negative one then i know that there was a unbalanced subtree and so i just want to pass the negative one up because even if the so even if I say I add another node down here like this, so I have a, this here, then I'm going to come here. And so this is not going to be balanced, right? This one, it's not going to be balanced here. It's not going to be balanced here. But when I get here, 
or when I call into these other, these right hand nodes, they are balanced. So like when I get here, I'm gonna get negative one from this side, but I'm gonna get two from this side. So I wanna make sure that I'm handling that properly where I'm gonna pass up one, negative one, even if one of the sides is balanced properly. So if H1 equals negative one or H2 equals negative one, then I'm going to just return negative one like that. And then otherwise I want to check and make sure that the height difference is one or less because that's what we're really looking for. And that's what's going to tell us that these two, that our current subtree that our node is the parent of is balanced because we're going to see that the height on either side is not more than one different. And then by doing this recursively, we're going to obviously cover our entire tree. So I'm going to say if I'm going to just take the absolute value and say if the absolute value, the absolute value of the difference and say if the absolute value of the difference is greater than one, then return negative one. So math abs h1 minus h2 is greater than one, then we're going to return negative one. And that's fine. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to return. So assuming that our tree is balanced, we want to return the greater of the two heights. And the reason why we want to do that is because the height of this subtree is two. Because the height of a subtree or a tree is the depth of the or the length of the longest branch in that tree. So we want to make sure that in this case, we're going to return three because of this subtree and not two because of this subtree. So we are going to just check which one is bigger. So if H1 is greater than H2, return H1 plus one. And otherwise we're going to just return H2 plus two, one. And the reason why we're doing the plus one is because we are incrementing the height because we're adding a node to the height. So hopefully that makes sense. That's our entire recursion here. And now the only thing that we need to do in our main method is going to be to call that. So we're going to just say if balanced height of, of N is greater than negative one, then we're going to return true, right? Because as long as our height is not negative one, it doesn't matter what the height is. As long as the height is not negative one or less than negative, it wouldn't be less than negative one, but as long as it's not negative one, then we have a valid or a balanced tree. And otherwise we're going to return false. So that's all there is to it. It's a little bit tricky because of the recursion, but it's not too, too difficult. So let's actually test this with an example. And I'm not going to go through this whole thing because this whole thing is really big. So I'm going to just modify this a little bit. And I want to make sure that I'm actually getting a good test. So I think this looks fine. And so let's come in here and we're going to call on node n, which is one. So I'm just going to keep track of n equals one. And now we're going to call balanced height on that. So we're going to say n is not null. So h1 is going to be the height of the left. So we're going to call balanced height of this node. So now n equals two. And we're going to do this again. So node two is not null. So we're going to come, we're going to get height of n dot left, which is the height of this. So now n equals four, and we're going to do this. We're going to call it one more time. We're going to call the height of the left, which is null. So n is null and we're going to return zero. So we are going to pop back up to here and then we're going to call the right, which is also going to be null, which is also going to be zero. So we're going to come down here. So they're both, both of the heights were zero. And so the difference is not greater than one and therefore we're going to return one. So now we have, we're back up to this node. And so we're going to return one from here up to two. And now this node is null. 
So we're going to return zero and come back to the two. And then we're going to have two versus one. So neither of them is negative one. And so two minus one or one minus zero, sorry, is going to be equal to one, which is not greater than one. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna return two because we're gonna return our h1, our h1 is one and h2 is zero. So h1 is greater than h2, so we're gonna turn one plus one, which is two. And now we're gonna come back up to here. And now we have that the left, so now we have that h1 equals two. So we're going to come down to, we're gonna now go on the right hand side and we're going to say that n equals three. And we're going to look at the left tree first, so n equals six. And then both the children are null and we know that those are gonna both return zero. So we get to here h1, h2 are both zero. So we get that this is now going to, we're gonna return one up. So now we have from three that h1 equals one and we're gonna call seven uh, with node seven. So n equals seven. We're going to look at the two children. They're both null. So we're going to return zero. And now we're back at seven. And so these are both zero. So we're gonna return h2 plus one, which is one. So now we have h2 equals one. So we're going to, and now we're at node three. So we have h1 and h2 are equal. So we come down here. Now we're gonna return two. So we're gonna come back up. And now we're going to say that h2 equals two. And then finally, we're going to come back to one. So we have two and two. We're going to return two plus one, which is three. So we're going to return three. And that's greater than or equal to, that's greater than negative one. So that's going to give us the result that we expect. And hopefully that all made sense. That's, it's not super tricky, but it's helpful to draw all this stuff out on the whiteboard when you're, tr especially you saw, I was sort of writing out all the steps and that wasn't just for you. That was for me to keep track of where we were in the recursion. Cause there's a lot to keep track of in your head. So writing out everything on the board is a huge, can, be a huge help to you and hopefully this problem made sense and if you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything else let me know in the comments below or on the blog and i will see you again soon